This one is called the pants. Take eight. Yoga. Welcome to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed, the best looking guys on the radio. We all know the funniest things happen when we stop taking ourselves too seriously and step out boldly, like Mr. Magoo blindly stepping onto the next swinging girder and falling into an outrageous jackpot. Your hosts, Daryl and Ed, are about to administer a refreshing dose of laughter and love that will inspire you to step out boldly and experience the funniest things. Now, here are your hosts, Daryl and Ed. Welcome to Funniest Thing, where each week we share stories about how stepping out boldly always leads to better than expected outcomes. Ah, yes, it does. I'm Daryl. And I am Ed. And we are broadcasting live from middle school studios in downtown Culver City, the heart of Screenland. Yes, it's good to be here. Yes, it is. And today's title is The Only Way Up is to Dummy Down. That's right, because everything is better when we are willing to trust that life is moving in a positive direction. Ah, and over here in Funniest Thing, Daryl and Ed have learned that no one is too dumb to accept these belief, this belief, but many are too smart, including us sometimes. Yes. And we're very excited. Someone we've talked about in the past is joining us today during the second segment, Reverend... Ken Gray from the Inglewood Center for Spiritual Living will settle in to discuss today's daily word, which is autumn. I know. They really are trying to stump the guys at Funniest Thing with today's daily word. Autumn. autumn. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if we can uh, bring out the metaphysical. The best, the best in. <laughs> bring out the best in autumn. So, we love this show. I think this is one of the main tenets that makes our show really click wouldn't you say well it definitely helps me click i was all i thought you were going to jump right i was getting ready for those three breaths well i'm leading right on into that man right on in. and we might as well let our listeners know now since we're very animated here at middle you look school like you're Studios. grasping the low-hanging fruit oh, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's checking us out on youtube or if you decide to go there later you'll see uh, um Elliot, that's my son's name. You'll see Daryl <laughs> grasping the low-hanging fruit. Yes, and that's exactly what I was going to share. I was going to go, if you're listening on our iPod, on our iPod, on our podcast, or listening through Unity Online Radio, we also have this segment videotaped live as we're recording it, and you can see that. Just go to DarylAndEd.com, and you can watch it on our YouTube channel. Yeah, so we... I consider that a compliment, though, to be, especially for the topic of today's episode, to be accidentally thought of as a child. Daryl and I both, at some point in our life, we, were, we got called into Jesus' office. We were befuddled. Everything was so complicated. Yes. And we got General Jesus said to us, boys, it's time for you to go dumb-dumb. Yes, so... the only way you could succeed on the material plane... Is you gotta go dumb dumb, and that was it, man. And we're gonna explain what that means. We spent the rest of our lives trying to unravel this mystery. Yes, and that's all it is. It's a big giant. What's that thing called with all the yarn? Rubik's cube. No, well, that too. <laughs> the yarn. It's like the the tangled yarn in our mind. Things. Oh, wait, 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 I gotta. Oh think, yes, I'm yes. I gotta figure this out. Yes. And all it takes to unravel that whole knotted up. True wad of yarn is just to go dumb dumb yeah because it's it only simple. that stress without thinking that um oh is causing the yarn to be so knotted up in the first place what did we get jeff comfort gave us some wisdom yes comfort gave us a the monkey mind he refers to it as that chatter in our head Ah, the monkey mind. Yeah, but who thinks he's very smart, though? Yeah, I often, though, think that's an insult to monkeys. It is. So, <laughs> wait, so I want to hear what Jesus' uh, plan of action. Well, I said, what do you mean, dumb-dumb? And he said, well, if you're not having fun fun, it's time to go dumb-dumb. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> then he handed me a cigar. I know, that was awesome. <laughs> and the rest is history. And I got worried and said... Are you sure it's okay to go dumb dumb? And what did Jesus say in return? I don't know. He just took the palm of his hand and smacked it against his forehead. Yeah. And he just shook his head and said, Ed, do you have a light? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> and then he pushed the button and told his secretary to get us out of his office immediately. <laughs> so that's what we have for you. Like many of the great teachers, we that's our that's our um, mystical experience that makes uh, that's our credential for being here to teach. So here we <laughs> ah, let's take a deep breath. Ah, if I'm not having fun, fun. It's time to go dum dum. Ah. If I'm not having fun fun, it's time to go dum dum. Ah. If I'm not, not having fun fun, it's time to go dum dum. Ah. You know, just a quick tidbit before we get into the readings. I was realizing earlier, and why I love this show. I mean, this is like the thing that lets us all off the hook. Yes. Because what I've discovered is it's not the things that happen to me or even the things I've done. It's when I get overly complicated, scared for some reason, then I start taking action out of that fear. It's my own actions that get me more tangled up in the yarn, I'm saying, in the past. You know, it's been my own actions. It's never, if I take a moment, just dummy down. Take a few breaths. Remember that I live in a loving universe, that everything's moving in the right direction. Really just keep it that simple. Everything always works out. Yes. It really does. It, it, it's that simple. Well, and that brings up that slogan that you've, we've all heard, many, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But that slogan that is pretty well known, it's that's that's the that's the whole meat and potatoes of keep it simple. Yes. Keep it simple. Dummy down. Relax. Yes. Stop making it so calm. You don't have to dig any deeper. Stop digging. You, you when know, you, that's what, yeah. that's funny because that's what yeah. Will Rogers said. If you find yourself in a hole, stop. Dig it. Yes, I saw a good quote on Instagram. Someone posted or Facebook in some group, and it said, "Even if you do nothing, you're moving in the right. You're always moving in the right direction." Yes, or something to that effect. And it just said, "Say thank you." Yes, and that's what we got to realize. We just got to dummy down, get in the flow with the creative genius that is behind everything, and boom, we end up by saying nothing. Sometimes, looking. Like, I've told these stories many times where I've ended up looking like the good. You know, like the the oh most amazing God. employer. I the people say these great things about me during uh, during after a meeting we've had, and in reality, I said nothing yes. the whole time. I know, just blessing a situation without saying anything is the smartest thing I could do yeah. most times. And speaking of smart, this is yeah. from Emmett Fox. Make your life worthwhile. Mm -hmm. You can find all these readings. They'll be actually the the readings from today's episode will be all available to you to read on our script show script page yes which will be updated this week plain and simple keep your prayers as simple as possible simple in manner and simple in thought the secret of successful prayer is that it is simple direct and spontaneous yes as soon as a prayer becomes complicated literary or high flown it has become an intellectual exercise and no longer a spiritual power in our metaphysical studies, we should try to be equally simple and definite. We should make a point of expressing what we believe and understand in the simplest and plainest terms, for both our, our own sake and the sake of anyone we may be enlightening. Yes. If your ideas about religion are expressed in a vague and involved style, if you use a lot of unusual or ambiguous words, it is a sure sign that you do not understand what you're talking about and are trying to disguise the fact from yourself. This device is a well-known trick of the subconscious to make us fool ourselves, and we should be on guard against it. Anything that you really understand, you can explain in reasonable, simple language, providing that it is susceptible of explanation at all. An air of heavy profundity conveyed in mysterious and vague phraseology is the hallmark of insincerity or of a muddled mind. Dude, that is great. Well, yeah, because as growing up or learning about spiritual things, you know, from people, mm -hmm. I used to think that simple meant 
it wasn't good enough. Right. So I would hear people talk about things, and I go, I don't understand what you're saying. That means I don't get it. You know, and I'd feel yeah. lost, and I would discount anything that was simple that I understood. I had it upside down. You're not kidding. I mean, even from the Bible. Um, this is great. I got this. Actually, I was reading something from Science of Mind, and this was the, um, this was the verse, Matthew 18. That they were citing so i went to the verse itself because we've read the other part from science of mind so many times on the show yes. so i said what does the actual verse say and we and i got this out of the message version of the bible which was given to us by some nuns which is a, a great modern translation of the bible for guys like daryl and i yes it dummies it's in, it down in plain english while maintaining the uh, sort of the integrity of the message yes and so but in in matthew 18 verses one through four it says, At about the same time, the disciples came to Jesus asking, Who gets the highest rank in God's kingdom? For an answer, Jesus called over a child whom he stood in the middle of the room and said, I'm telling you once and for all that unless you return to square one and start over like children, you're not even going to get a look at the kingdom, let alone get in. Whoever becomes simple and elemental again like this child will rank high in God's kingdom. And you know what? I love this because... Wait. Oh. That ending oh, is yeah, great. great. If you're spiritual... Uh, if, if uh, Let's see. No, oh, that, no that's, that's not, not from... That's, another, <laughs> that's a quote that you came up with. We can share that as well. But that was like a good synopsis of what I we know, just I read. So but excited. I was going to say, I like this because... I One of the things that occurred to me during the week getting ready for this was just to reiterate that Daryl and I relearn this stuff every day because we're relearning at every moment how to live successfully or joyfully like but most of what we're doing is letting go of the old stuff we used to think yes and re and and realigning with what's really going on i mean this is a process of constantly dummying down and getting back into harmony with life and you mentioned something about the spontaneity yes. of the prayer yes. in the emmet thing and i was thinking about that God's love, God, that, that inspired action, it's always spontaneous. It has to be because it's perfect for that moment. It's not like some pre-planned speech. Daryl and I call it, oh, this is a great thing to point out. Daryl and I call it get, giving a Gettysburg address. Yes. When I'm not feeling good, for some reason, whether it's with my wife or with uh, my friend or at work, I get tempted to give this like Gettysburg address, this highfalutin speech about why I'm doing this, about why I'm right, about this or that or the other thing, or about why the world's broken or why this. Now Daryl and I know if I feel like and I if I feel like giving, if we feel like giving a Gettysburg address, we need to dummy down. Yes. Because that's not gonna help anyone. No. You know, I end up like preaching something that to the choir as they say or, or telling like my wife's sitting there going yeah i know all this why are you preaching to me about you're the one who sounds like you need to re you know to get it so dummy down get back in the flow and then there's almost never really a need to give a gettysburg address i you know what i think this yeah that goes this goes right to the heart of it we're going to read something from alan cohen's uh, deep breath of life it's another book we have listed on our reading list which you could find at darylnet.com yeah, and on September 17th, the, if, this is an excerpt from the reading called Holy Loafing. So let's see here. This quote's good from Samuel Butler. If to do great work, a man must be very idle as, very, as well as very industrious. Jerry Gillies, an award-winning NBC broadcaster and author of the million-selling book Money Love, underscores the importance of creative loafing. Jerry affirms, Self-reflection is one of the most productive things you can do with your creative imagination. When I was the director of the Biofeedback Institute, I demonstrated to some of the top executives of major corporations that by slowing down, they'd be able to tap into deeper levels of their subconscious and come up with more valuable ideas. One publishing executive started taking Wednesdays off to relax and meditate. He reported back to me that he had gotten much more work accomplished in the remaining four days than he had ever gotten done in five. Now, this is awesome because this is something that I know 100% to be true, yes. but I have to keep reminding myself yes. that it is indeed true because the overall consciousness floating around is 
You got to push through. You got to make it happen. Yes. You got to do more. Yes. Uh, if you're not working on your business, at least, you know, yes. something on your business each day, yes. then you're going backwards. Let me just tell you, all that is nonsense. It is. It'll push you back further. I know this from personal experience. Yes. And we were talking, I'm going to be doing this this cruise. Yes. And I'm one of the I'm the speaker on the cruise for uh, the Yugozi uh, Mastermind Cruise that's coming up next month, and I'm very grateful to be invited to do this. Yes. And one of the things that Larry Broughton, who's organizing it, wants me there for is to get people started on a morning routine. Yes. Because even he has discovered the same fact that pushing. Like thinking I got to do more to get ahead is actually self-defeating and that by dummying down like me and Ed refer to it. And that's it's not to insult yourself. It's just we mean dumb. Let go of all the chatter, all the complicated, just like Jesus said, become like a child, meaning allow yourself to just know when you relax and you wholly loaf like Jerry Giles said that life is moving in a positive direction, that the next right thing for me to do will be revealed to me and it'll be inspired and it'll feel good yes. and I'll want to act on it. Yes. That I don't need to make 20 calls today because I made 10 yesterday and it takes 102 calls to get a 1% return. All that stuff, there's some validity in that, but that that goes along the lines of if you got to fight to get it, you're going to have to fight to keep it. Yes. And what I'm getting at is the other day I was at a meeting. It was a group of people mm -hmm. and it got to be the, the meeting started to go haywire. And a lot of people were complaining, blaming and justifying present misery based on past yeah. history. Right. Right whether it was their own mistakes or the fault of someone else, so they believed. And when it got to me, I knew I just can't, I can't even live in that space anymore because it's just death for me. Yeah. So I shared how, you know, I got to really dummy down. I got to be like a child. I just got to believe. Yes. Throw all my belief in the fact that yes. life really is moving in a, in a positive direction. Yes. That all this will come together for good. Yes. And I have to throw all my mind into expecting that no matter what, good will come about. What that does is that makes me feel happy in the present. Yes. And when I'm happy in the present, I'm kind to people. I'm not doing things out of fear that might cause me problems or regrets. That's right. So in a more practical sense, it's healthy. But this is not why I'm bringing it up. Bring up because the next person to speak said immediately, well, I can't afford to believe in magical thinking. I have to think responsibly. And let me tell you, at first I thought, oh, I guess I'm just a dumb, you know. Yeah. And then, you know what, though? That's crap. And this is not crap. Yeah. Meaning, because deep down, I know this is true. That's right. Because I always feel comfort and at peace when it's reassured by other people right. who seem to be way more um, um, successful than I am, if whatever you whatever your definition of success is, you know, like a CEO like that guy, head of the Biofeedback yeah. Institute. You know, all this stuff. The reason we have great quotes from people, and Ed brought this up earlier, like Einstein, yes, is just to reassure us that they get their best ideas, not because they invented them themselves. They all said it. You said it best. Why don't you say what you told me? Yeah, they were the, they were the people who were just able to dummy down enough to see what was already going on around them, to see how life was already really working and this is i mean you see you yeah. you mentor all these ceos and all this and every you always let them off the hook they're always yeah. so grateful when they hear these words and the, you know the as we go to the break here there's one little few sentences right here where in the power of decision where raymond charles barker when it says when we make this decision to go with the flow yes, and trust to let go dummy down it says you decide to give and receive love you know you can do this and make intelligent plans to do it you are no longer fighting the human race you have taken your place in it as a loving, kind, and generous person. You attract to yourself people and situations which are the right ones for you. 
Love in you finds love in them. Love in them finds love in you. The infinite is loving by means of you, and you give it full freedom of action. And there's nothing better than that. And that will be on our website, so don't feel like you missed that That's if right. you just heard it. It'll be up there for you to reread at your leisure. All right, coming up next, Reverend Ken Gray from the Inglewood Center for Spiritual Living will settle in to discuss today's daily word, autumn. Thank you for listening to Funniest Thing on Unity Online Radio. This one is called the pants. It's not a verb. It's a noun. It's autumn. Yeah. It's not a verb I could tap into. No, it's a noun. It's autumn. Autumn. Today we're going to make autumn into a verb. Yeah. Oh, wait. Kenneth Gray? Should we accept? Yeah. Let's see what he looks like. Is he there? Oh, my God. Whoa. Whoa, that's a lot of headroom. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I, I, Dude, I, hello. I, How are you? Look at that. Yeah, show off your masculine chest. I'm surprised you're wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> are you wearing your kilt? Not today. Ah. Actually, I used to have one ages ago. I don't know what happened to it. It nice. got tilted. When you <laughs> tilt those kilts a little too often, you, you wear, wear you wear through the front. <laughs> yeah, <I should> wear <laughs> comfort's dying. <laughs> oh man, dude, this is awesome. Now, yeah. is there is there a metaphysical Bible study tonight, or is there not? Well, uh, since I'm doing the program today, I thought we'd just skip that for tonight. That's fine, because right. Ed can go fencing and I can nap. Or I'll go to Costco and get a giant 32-pound yogurt for a dollar thirty-five. Yeah, that really lights him up. Gonna say a, I thought you were going to say a 32-pound donut. Oh, uh, well, that would work, too, <laughs> from Randy's. <laughs> I like that. So we'll be coming back. We're going to thank our listeners, and then we're going to introduce you. You have the daily word there for uh, to read. Uh, well, I I had it somewhere. All right. Well, good. Because you're going to be reading it in about ten minutes. <laughs> Hold on a second. I think I got it. Don't All worry. Right. You have time. Yeah. <laughs> He's an IT guy. He's complicated like Jeff Comforti. He works on computers all day, working with right. numbers. No, I, I don't have it. Maybe it's out in the car. Well, go get it, son. You're going to be reading it. Yeah. Okay, hold on. <laughs> don't, you could bring us back anytime you like. Yeah. You don't have to wait. Wait, watch. Because we don't hear you anymore. Oh, come on. You're listening to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed, the best looking guys on the radio. If you have a question or comment about today's show, or if you'd like to join in the discussion, friend us on Facebook at Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed, or email us at Funniest Thing at UnityOnlineRadio.org. Now, back to Funniest Thing. All right, welcome back. The only way up is to dummy down. Isn't that good news? God bless you. Oh, I know what that means. We got a reading to kick off this segment from one of our new, uh, what is our new gurus? Yeah, Joel Osteen. Daryl's been buying all of his material. That was free, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you can get that Excuse from me. his website. You get it from the website. It's called Growing in God's Favor. And here's a quickie from number 37 says, if you can learn to stay in an attitude of faith in your darkest hour, which can be anytime. throughout the day, yeah. anytime there's doubt or fear or complication going on, if you can learn to stay in an attitude of faith in your darkest hour and boldly declare the favor of God, which means that life is moving in a positive direction, nothing's going to be able to keep you down. It's just that simple. Yes, it is. And speaking of that simple, yeah, this is the time we love to thank our listeners Ed and I are so grateful to have yes. you listening to our show yes. each week. We get stories of how you share our show by downloading yes. it and making gifts of CDs for yes. people, which is a great idea. Yep. I never even thought of that. And your letters, everything means so much to us. 
We love doing this show. It makes us feel good to know you're out there, and we we always feel so overwhelmed with joy yeah. whenever we get a mail, comment, even a like on Facebook. Yeah, if you want to send anything to us, or um, either go to DarylNed.com, you can communicate with us electronically, or you can uh, mail uh, send us anything at funniest thing at PO Box 1312. Culver City, California, 90232. That's right. We got a P.O. box now. Yeah, just like a real, we're a real show. Yes, and we are. We'll read that again at the end of the episode, just in case you missed it. Um, we're excited about that P.O. box. And we are also excited about the man behind the, what do you call that? The curtain. My man behind the curtain, the yeah. Wizard of Oz. Yeah, the chief uh, audio engineer, Big Jeff Comfort. Chief. Not yeah. of just this show, but he makes every show on Unity Online Radio sound professional. In fact, he takes us all right, right into the comfort zone. Yeah. Some people have a man cave. Jeff has a comfort zone, he calls it. <laughs> yes. That's right, that's right. It's in big neon lights. You can't see it, but you we can see it behind them. Oh, yeah. If you're driving through Missouri, you'll see like the neon, like, zzz, zzz, yeah, comfort, the comfort zone. zone. Yes, yes, um, yes. We also like to give a shout out to something both Ed and I find extremely helpful. Yes. We recommend it to everyone. It does not cost a penny. And that's the prayer line, 1-800-NOW-PRAY. Mm-hmm. And that's 1-800-669-7729. Um, you could also use the You Pray app. Yes. It's free at the App Store. It's the letter U and the word pray is one yes. word. We both use it and we both get results and we highly recommend That's it. That's right. And I it, used it this week for my students, like not for so much for them, but for me to get in a positive state of mind and a, and a you know, place of joyful expectancy with them. And it really works. I mean, just sending that prayer out there, I used the app right before one of my lunch groups began. I've already seen like just little miracles happening where, you know, a different group of kids showed up that day or what, you know, or I, I just saw things differently and I enjoyed the process. Yes. And look for the miracles in your life. Yeah. Like make mental notes of, oh, funniest thing. Look yes. at this. And I prayed about that before because you ki will continue to get more of what you're looking for. Yes, you and do. And Ed and I always like, we call it connecting the dots. And That's we're important. talking about connecting the good dots. Yes. And one of them, I've already seen results. Ed's talking about prayers for his kids in the class. Yes. Twice. In two days in a row, at the same location, oh my God, me yes. and Ed have been at this traffic light walking mm -hmm. in downtown Culver City. And why don't you tell the story of the student? Oh, yeah. One of the kids that I've been specifically, him, specifically right. thinking of when I send him love and appreciation and, and, and intend on seeing the best in him. Twice, right before our show... He drove by the same spot after we ate our lunch and said, "Hey, Mr. With B. It, Joe yeah. Ray," and with his mom with driving. His mom. And today we got a today we got a high five through the window, and man, it's just I can just feel God working, you know. Like, and I, again, it's not necessarily changing the kids; it's changing the way I feel about them and what and what I realize my job really is, which is to to just see them as perfect, connect with them in a loving way. And when I do that, everything else takes care well, of itself. Well, that's the key to all this. Even Florence Scovel Shin says, yes. once the enemy is evaporated from in ourselves, yes. then it's transformed on the outside. Whatever the fear was or the concern, once it's transformed within, yes. then the without corresponds positively. Always, always, uh, always. And now it's the time. Oh, and the prayer line's been around for 125 years. And also, this is the time Ed and I really look forward to. Actually, this is why oh our guests are always come. And hey, let me say one thing before you do it. Yes. If you want to join us for this segment. Oh, yes. Also, get in touch with us through Facebook, through DarylNed.com, or send us a letter at the P.O. Box. We want you to join us. It makes this show experience so much better. Yes. And if you need a daily word to join us, go to DarylNed.com. And on our page is a button. It says special offer, and it is the lowest introductory rate. I mean, it comes to just pennies a day. You'll have yes. the Daily Word subscription going straight to your house. You'll be able to read along with us, yes. and you'll be able to join us on the air. Just let us know. We would love to have you as a guest. Yes, yes, yes. And that brings us to today's guest, a minister we know and love and who has taught us so much. He's been... 
We've often talked about we don't go into the Bible without a doctor giving us a prescription and letting us know what to read. Yeah, or, or a traffic cop guiding us down the right yeah. road. Yes, and Reverend Ken Gray from the Inglewood Center for Spiritual Living is with us today, and he has been that for us on many occasions. Yes, Kenneth, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Good to hear you guys. He hear that, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Man. They've heard about you. We always uh, occasionally, not always, but most of the time, we refer to the Englewood Center for Spiritual Living, where we get some of the good earnest home stuff to yes. share with our listeners. We share a lot of what we learn. So they've heard about you, and now they get to hear you. This is like the teacher coming to the student, like our clubhouse. Like, yeah. This is a great honor for us. So yeah, thank after you. school, he came up to see our tree fort that we built. That's right. Just don't step over there. You might fall through. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a pleasure to have you in class, but really I have to say that uh, you guys teach me a lot too, and so I just really enjoy our interactions. The, uh, you know, the world has a lot of craziness, but God's intention, of course, is for it to be a beautiful place, mm. a happy place. Yes. And you guys are, are teaching and expressing and experiencing the universe as a, a good place and we just look forward to the entire human race getting to that kind of consciousness and beyond wow Amen. that is That's, the best wow. compliment ever we That's got, great. We got a gold star today. Kenneth's been doing for us what I do for my kids in the lunch group. I know. It's about time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you read today's daily word so we can discuss it? Okay, sure. I'd be happy to. This one's about autumn. It says, I'm in a constant state of rejuvenation. Ah. I am in awe of nature's consistency. Every autumn, the earth begins its cycle of release, rest, and replenishment. Winter is a time for rest. Then comes the rebirth of spring. By summer, flowers are in full bloom again. I take cues from nature to improve how I nurture my body. My day includes periods of work, play, and relaxation. I prepare for sleep by releasing the events of the day. I awaken ready for the new day. The trees undergo a major transformation every year with what appears to be little effort. In a similar way, I accept the cycles of my life. I honor the divine working through me. I am in a constant state of rejuvenation. And then there's a little Bible quote from Genesis 1, verse 14. You want to hear that too? Yes. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Ah. Uh. Amazing, isn't it? Very yes. comforting. You know, what I like to do is look at the cycle of each day. And I, uh, I'm sort of a, an enthusiast of uh, astronomy. And I realized uh, when I uh, read about it years ago, every sunrise actually happens in an entirely different place in the universe. Not only is the Earth spinning mm. at about 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, uh, the planet's orbiting the sun at about 10,000 miles an hour. The sun itself is orbiting the center of the Milky Way galaxy at about 100,000 miles an hour. And the Milky Way galaxy, the whole thing, <laughs> is moving through space. So literally, we're moving into a new place in oh. space every second. Mm. Every sunrise may look a little bit similar, very much similar, but no two sunrises are alike. And so it is with our day. So I like to start out my day with some kind of um, inspirational material, little prayer, little meditation, little reading, depending on the day. Sometimes I'm in a big hurry, and so I just say, you know, the Lord's Prayer, and then I'm out the door. But uh, something to really get me centered and on that spiritual wavelength of love and truth and goodness and beauty. And that really sets the tone. And so eh, to speak of cycles, I'd say uh, also, I like to drink a cup of coffee in the morning. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a stimulant. And your right. body is gearing up, see? Mm -hmm. And so is your brain, your mind. It's also gearing up for the events of the day. Right. Then, as you do your activities, your work, whatever it is, uh, by the time the evening rolls around, either you go to Inglewood Center for Spiritual Living or you start to relax <laughs> right. and, and reflect, as the uh, wonderful um, treatment was saying. You reflect on the experiences of the day and assimilate them and understand them and give thanks for your day. So uh, well, I will. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm always looking for uh, the point of how I can increase my happiness experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I use those cycles of, of uh, waking and, and getting more excited and having more activities and then slowing down going to sleep and resting at night yeah you know i really like this was a tough one because autumn i'm going oh my god they threw us a zinger this week how are we gonna really find any meat and potatoes in autumn yeah right yes and but you know what i love about this entire reading it reaffirms exactly what today's topic is it basically is saying I am in a constant state of rejuvenation, meaning I don't have to make it happen. And it says, doesn't say anything about, I got to move further, jump higher, mm -hmm. push harder. It constantly reaffirms, even the earth cycle is one of release, rest, and natural replenishment. And I also like, you know, throughout my day, it's activity, play, relaxation. That's how I nurture my body. And then I like the end of the day, releasing the events of the day. Let them go. The good ones and the ones, of course, we don't definitely don't want to hold on to. We let go of those a little bit easier, or sometimes not so easy if we're resisting letting them go. But let it all go to have the enthusiasm. Wow, I wonder what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, it's always yeah. going to be better. And I don't need to make it happen. Me and Ed have been using an affirmation on our minds lately, Ken, that's been very helpful. And it's been, mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything more to receive, you know, to, re yes. to, deserve to deserve what comes to me naturally. Yes. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. have to, to, yeah. To, 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 yeah. I was just thinking almost that exact same thought. In order to uh, really achieve greater happiness, yeah, we don't have anything to do, but we just have to be. Yeah, because within us, there's a part of us. I mean, there's so much stress, and I noticed in all this reading we did, there was not the word stress. Yeah, no if we get, it doesn't have to be a stressful experience. Yeah, but. What it helps us to be happy, and the only way to do it, is to come to be aware of who and what we really are. Yes. That's a matter of awareness. It's a matter of understanding. It's not a matter of this, this stressful, pushing, muscular, high testosterone yes. activity that we got to do. Uh, it's, you know, in some people's beliefs, somehow we have to uh, please God or, or earn God's love. Even. Right. And that's crazy. Yeah. Yes, because, it is. Because the love of God is already within us. Some part of us is already happy. Yes. And so the whole point, and I think the whole purpose of life, is to discover happiness. Yeah. So whatever, way, whatever we do, whatever our job is, whatever our relationships are, I'm just always looking for more understanding of what's mm. really going on. Yeah. yeah. Because truth is really about happiness, joy peace and love yeah i like yeah. i like too that you brought up remember who what we are because ed you've been saying a lot lately that just the fact that i'm alive means i deserve all the good that comes to me and it's this weird thing oh no we don't not unless i earn it and then them which is crap <laughs> that's the wrong thought the healthy thought is what you've been saying lately and it's helped me because then it really made me think do you know how much love 
it took for us to come to life. Yes. Like when I, you know what I mean? That I do. love yeah. brought us to life. Not yes. anger, yeah. not stress brought me to life. Right. That love brought me to life. And somehow throughout my day, I tend to forget that. And I think I got to earn it again. Yes. But I, that's why I'm grateful for people like you, Ken, for friends like Edward, for things like Unity Online Radio, for spiritual, just to remind me to, Dummy down. Yeah, well, you know what? When we remember, and as I really love what Ken just pointed out and what you're pointing out, is when I remember who and what I am, yeah. then I'm more able to cooperate with who and what I am. Yes. And when I cooperate, like Ken was saying, when I sleep, when I need... Because I found myself a couple of days ago like st- making falling asleep into a stressful thing like because my mind was still running on as if it was like the earlier part of the day where I was getting ready to do something. This time I just started saying, no, I just lovingly, whatever, said goodnight to my son. I loving, I don't know, for some reason yes. that this, there was this old expectation running that I should be doing more, doing more. But as soon as I just comforted myself and said, no, I love, or I just said, I lovingly just did this. I lovingly did this. I just had a wonderful day. I reflected a little on what had happened. My mind relaxed and I go, oh yeah, it's just natural for me to now drift off to sleep. You know, here's an idea that is new to some people. God is not stressing us out. We are the ones who stress ourselves out. There's yes. no such requirement for us to to suffer or to have pain or to be stressed so that we can somehow earn uh, heaven, right. which we don't get right. until after we die in, in many teachings. But instead, I think the greatest, I'm a fun-loving person. I love to laugh. I love humor. Sometimes I'll just uh, get onto YouTube and start watching Chris Rock videos and that kind of thing. It just cracks me up. Uh-huh. I mean, I can just look at his face with all due respect. <laughs> and I know he has an inner clown and he can just say nothing and I'll start laughing. <laughs> so, the, but the greatest joy that we can really experience, that I've experienced, is when there's no particular material circumstance or condition or relationship or amount of money, but rather I just feel really joyful to be. I am happy just because I am. That's right. I am me, a divine being created in the image and likeness of God. I mean, what more could you ask for? (laughs) Yeah, you you got to dumb me down to actually think that though. Isn't that funny? Because once I really grab a hold of oh, that man. idea, it's like, holy mackerel. It's amazing. This is awesome. Dude. Our minds get full of these, these you know, pseudo-intellectual ideas. And you're right. We really have to kind of push all that aside, release it, let it go, and, you know, and look at things. What's, what really helps me to feel happier and what brings me down? And just kind of take mental notes and then move along the path towards the activities, the relationships, and just being who you are. And that will bring more happiness, uh, more stress-free relaxation and joy into people's life than they've ever experienced before. I really believe that. That is a perfect way for us to say goodbye for today, Ken. Thank you very much. We're about to go to a break. We appreciate you coming by. Thank you. That was awesome. I feel great. I feel awesome. I'm sure our listeners do too. So Reverend Kenneth Gray from the Inglewood Center for Spiritual Living, thank you again. Thank you. Coming up after the break, we have a joke of the day, listener mailbag, and more. So thank you for listening to Funniest Thing on Unity Online Radio. This one is called The Pants. Take eight. Yoga. Woo. Hey. Uh-huh. Woohoo! That was hey, that great. Was fun. I know. I feel so oh relaxed. I feel so good now. I know. We got. What do we got coming up? We got a joke. We got great mail. We yeah. Got a little Barker. Reading, Barker. Yard Barker. We got a little Barker. We got going. Raymond Charles. We got oh, a, yeah. Raymond Charles Barker. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Boom. Power of decision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, this is awesome. This was a great class. Yes, it was. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. 
My pleasure and uh, honor to be here on the radio with you guys. That was great. And now that we have you all hooked in, now next time you're on, it'll be easy. Yep. Because we'll definitely want to have you back. Oh, definitely. Oh, man, I didn't get my new Skype ID. No, but this one's great. Comfort until like a couple of hours ago. I was like, oh, my God. This works. This works perfect. It sounds great. You look good. Yep. He's a great engineer, you know. He got his all information kind of at the last minute and whoop, got it there all There it is. That's how he rolls. Yeah. He's been driving yeah. locomotives for years. That's right. <laughs> all right. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. God bless you, all man. Right. All right. We love you. Love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye. All right. You ready? Yes. You ready to take it home? You ready? You have your number three? Ready to drop a number three on them? Yes. You're the highlighter? Yes. Oh, the punchline is? The light was on. Daryl saying the light was on. I don't think Comfort can hear us. That's okay. Yeah, I can hear everybody say. Okay, great. Oh, wow. What's the, what's the joke of the day? The punchline is, is Daryl <laughs> Daryl saying? The light was on. The light was on? Yeah. My light was off. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Now... What mail? Barker first. How about this? We'll share joyously. Oh, yeah. Should we pretend it came through the P.O. box? Well, it did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, we got... Wait, what happened to the other one? What one? <laughs> oh. oh, welcome All right. back. Welcome the, back, the Cotter. On, the only way up is to dummy down. Woo-hoo. Way down. Let's dummy way down. Way down. And we'll, should you, we read some of... Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Raymond Charles Barker. Power of Decision. All these readings will be on our show script page on our DarylNed.com. All the books are also available on a reading list where you can get linked to an online distributor. Yes. All right. So this whole chapter called Decisions, Decisions, Decisions is amazing. And uh, there's one, a couple of paragraphs right here where he says, When you trust... The creative power of the universe. You know what real relaxation is. You do not have to solve the problems of the world unless you are the head of a government. You do not have to solve other people's troubles unless you are a professional counselor. You do have to solve your own problems, and this you do without fuss and anxiety. You make right decisions and let the subconscious mind do the work. Your attitude, I am resolved what to do. Therefore, tensions regarding decisions cannot arise in your mind, emotions, and body. To trust in life reduces the pressures of everyday living. It makes you feel that the whole world is supporting you at all times. This is exactly what the world is doing. Something great, wonderful, and true is backing up each of us. I like that because it goes along with cast the burden. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And Florence Scovel Shin, just coincidentally, I heard on the way in from uh, The Game of Life, I have it on CD, said that all burdens are just our own, it's a mental conflict. That's right. And it's mental discord in our own mind. Right. And just cast that, just cast it. We have an episode called Hurl Your Crap Over the Fence, which is a great supplement for this episode. That's right. And that's why... When our energy is split and we're feeling stressed out because we're of two minds in that moment, make a new decision in that moment. And and it it doesn't have to even be based on whatever the subject of the stress was, but you start simple. You dummy down. Make the decision, any decision such as, I live in a loving universe. Everything is working itself out. Just that act of making decisions. Let me just... Since you brought that up, we'll bring some peace and clarity. Yes, Yes. because the great fact about just grabbing for another thought, the great fact is this. When you reach for the thought that feels better, the universe instantly begins responding differently to you because of that effort. And so the things that follow, you get better and better, too. So it gets easier to reach for the thought that feels better because you are on an ever-increasing, improving platforms that feel better. There and that's from Abraham. Well, speaking of feeling better. On, feeling better, walking on platforms. There, did you hear about this man? The other day he walked into an office building and then entered the dentist's office. Wow. And he said, Excuse me, can you help me? I keep thinking I'm a moth. You think you're a moth, said the dentist? You don't need me. You need to see a psychiatrist. There's one two doors down the hallway. 
I know, said the man. Well, then why did you come into my office, asked the dentist. And the man replied, The light was on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, saved by Gabby. <laughs> All right. uh, if you watch on YouTube, you get to see the joyous, happy dance we do when Gabby's yeah, coming the in there with the mouth. moves we have. Thank God we had that Hollywood choreographer teach us oh that one. Oh my God, it's the best. Choreographer, that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, we got one here. This came to our new P.O. box. Yeah, 1312. P.O. Box 1312, Culver City, California, 90232. That's correct. Yes. And this is from Jackie. Jackie Dolby. Yes. Very similar to Thomas Dolby. It's a star is born. <laughs> yeah. This is an invite to her birthday party. Nice. It's in South Carolina. And even though we can't attend, she addressed it to Daryl and Ed, Gabby, Mr. French, and Jeff. Yep. And why she sent it to us is she made a little star here, and this is why we received it, Ed. You ready? Yes. If you are receiving this invitation, it is because you touch Jackie's life in your own special way. And a lot of you are special, if you know what I mean. You may be part of Jackie's new family that crosses all boundaries, race, religion, and guitar preferences. Know that you are loved and your why do you have to check that? Because you didn't. It is guitar. Prep. I know it's amazing. Know that you are loved, and your presence will be another reason to celebration. Nice. So we're all in. Yeah. Comfort. We'll come by. We'll pick you up. We'll borrow. We'll borrow Tom Thorpe's Red Rocket and go over to Jackie's. Uh, Thank party you there. so much for so sending. awesome. Because she went out of our way going through our e- contact yeah. email to, to get our address to make sure we received that. And we love you, Jackie. Thank you so much now for this, including us. Yeah, definitely. These mail, this mail blows us away. Here's another one that we got through our funniest thing, DarylNed.com, from DarylNed.com. This is amazing. It's from Justine Chia from Kuala Lumpur, which is in Malaysia. And I apologize if I, any of that was mispronounced. It says, Dear Daryl and Ed, Hi, my name is Justine Chia, and I was in a very bad mental state about a year ago. I remembered the sentence, let go and let God, from a book I've read in the 90s. I googled the sentence and was led to the Unity website on the subject. After reading the excerpts about let go and let God, I immediately felt better. I have been to churches before, but it never felt right because I could not understand the need to bring other faiths down. It was something like, if it's not Christian, it's the devil. All fear-based. I stopped going to church and I was malnourished spiritually until that day. Long story short, I discovered unity and you guys that day and I knew I have finally come home. I prayed to God to accelerate my learning of the I am. Through you guys, I have learned quickly because you make it easy to understand what it is all about. Plus, who doesn't love to laugh? I have yet to meet a unity follower in Kuala Lumpur, but for now, I feel that connection through you guys. I'm better than I've ever been in my life. Thank you, and I want you guys to know you have changed lives in countries you have never, you've not been to, but you are certainly heard. Wow, what a Dude, compliment. That, and that happened on a day when I just started like having that inkling of doubt in my own mind because I heard my son and I listened to all these podcasts, and there was these guys um, talking about how they got 5 million hits on a video about how to like play Luigi's Mansion or whatever it was. <laughs> right. And I was like, five million hits? And my mind started we going. We got seven. Yeah, we like 50 <laughs> people watch our site and we're uh, uh, one of our YouTubes and we're shocked. But you know what? I Because of our show, I just dummied down. I, as Joel Osteen said, I didn't let it into my secret place. I didn't yes. let it into the into inside me, that doubt and worry. I just kept you know, affirming that all was well. And that very day, we got this letter and we found out we had 700 people like our page on I Facebook. I know. It the 700 jumped, Club. I, we're in the 700 Club. Fantastic. It jumped up from like 660 or 70 up to 700 like overnight. Yeah, and that's you, our Facebook page. So you got to dummy down. Even when you have good reason to doubt, it feels so like provocative or seductive, just keep dummy down. Go, no, I'm just going to dummy down because I know that life is moving in a positive direction. And then all of a sudden, within five minutes of 10 minutes of me doing that, 
all this great news came in. So just keep going. Keep dumbing down. And it'll all work out. We got another letter down there that you might want to read. Well, this kiss came from David and Donna McClure, who were guests on our show last week. It's and they awesome. said, Daryl and Ed, thank you so much for inviting us back to your show. It rocks. And so do you guys. The mark of success is upon you, David and Donna. Yes. And you can listen to that last week's episode. Just go to iTunes or our YouTube page. You can find it all easily at DarylAndEd.com. That's right. That's right. What was last week? Live free or die? Or? Live free or die. Yeah. And you know what? We've done something that we should feel good about today. And the daily word was autumn. autumn. And from that... We have had an excellent show. Yes, we have. Because it's all, you know, the, the autumn the, was all about how things change. The seasons are changing. The tides rise. They fall. Right now, the tide might be a little high. But you know what Daryl and Ed always say? The tide is high and we're moving on. God's gonna be our number one. God's not the kind of God who gives up just like that. Visit DarylAndEd.com to find easy, easy links to everything we do, including the funniest Ken Gray. thing. Facebook page. Tilted Kill. Our YouTube page. Our Twitter account at Daryl Jeff and Ed. And also, you can write to us in good old-fashioned parcel post Woo! to Funniest Thing, P.O. Box, P.O. Box 1312, Culver City, California, 90232. And as always... Thank you for being a part of Funniest Thing God's with Daryl and Ed God on Unity Online Radio. Like oh no! Woo! <laughs> Jeremiah loves you! Yeah. That was a cool yeah at the end. <laughs>